Tēnā koutou katoa, no mai, haere mai. Welcome people to our house of worship. Welcome to you on this uh, lovely Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And um, it is a good time, isn't it? We've got a holiday weekend that we're enjoying. Some of us will have the day off uh, tomorrow. Uh, the weather of late has been uh, kind. Um, and this time next week, we could be celebrating a national sporting event, uh, all going uh, well. So there's lots to uh, celebrate uh, for us, and hopefully we can have more to celebrate, uh, as I say, this time next week. A hospitable and gracious welcome is our theme for today, and Christina Turner is our preacher. She's going to open the word to us and how God has been speaking through her uh, on these uh, scriptures that we will hear. So as our service commence, let me open with a word of prayer. Lord God Almighty, as we gather together as your people, we recognize that you are a gracious and hospitable God. Grant us the wisdom to worship and pray according to your will and open our hearts to your divine revelation. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our liturgist this morning is Kate, and I invite you all now to stand as you are able for our opening hymn, Let All the World in Every Corner Sing, My God and My King. Let us be upstanding. Thank you, Antoinette. It is my privilege to be your um, liturgist this morning and lead you in worshipping God. Um, as usual, if you will just join me in the words in bold on the screen. So let us take a moment to centre our hearts on God before we pray. Grace and peace to you from God. God fill you with truth and joy. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us be glad and be glad in it. Almighty God, two more hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. We cleanse the thoughts of our instincts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name. Through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you like to sit and get comfortable, I will pray for the children and the youngsters as they go out. Lord, your church is a place of learning. We ask that you would teach us your ways, 
this morning, Lord, and we just ask that you would bless our young people as they go out, Lord, that they might have fun, but that your spirit will be with them and that you will touch their hearts. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Go and have some fun, guys. So as they go, we would um, sit or kneel, whichever is comfortable. Hear the teaching of Christ. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And a second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. God of God, search our hearts. Hear the teaching of Christ. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. Spirit of God, search our hearts. Hear God's word to all who turn to Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from every kind of wrong. God has promised his forgiveness to all who truly repent, turn to Christ in faith, and are themselves forgiven. In silence we call to mind our sins. Let us confess our sins. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance. We have sinned in weakness. We have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for serve your Christ's sake and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. I runga i te mano i hukaraiti ka murua e te atua o Koutouhara. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Amen. Our sentence for today, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And let us pray our prayer of the day together, which is either on your newsletter front or on the screen. Almighty God, by whose grace alone we are accepted and called to your service, strengthen us by the Holy Spirit and make us worthy of our calling. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we will sit as the readers come forward. Thank you. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, chapter 45, beginning in verse 1. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gate shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains, I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, 
so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make wheel and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labour of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of people we prove to be, among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place where your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 22, beginning at verse 15. Praise, Praise and Lord glory to God. God. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he had said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. 
Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the Gospel of Christ. Please be seated. When I came to prepare for this morning's sermon, I found myself in a bit of a quandary. You see, this morning is my first time preaching here at St Aidan's on a Sunday, and I wasn't quite sure how to begin. There were a myriad of questions turning around in my mind. Did I need to introduce myself? What was I going to say? And just how was I going to say it? I wanted my words to be warm and welcoming, but I was unsure on how to make them so. What I needed, or so I thought, was an introductory formula of some kind, one that would provide me with a degree of certainty on how best to proceed. It was then with a need for assurance and possibly some warm and welcoming words that I turned to this morning's gospel reading. I wondered perhaps if the text might contain some insight on how best I might proceed. You see, it is in the Gospels that we encounter Jesus of Nazareth, and we hear those familiar words attributed to him. Come and follow me. At the beginning of his ministry, Jesus called out to his disciples, Come and follow me and I will make you fishers of people. And as his ministry progressed, he called to the crowds, if anyone would come after me, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. And then towards the end of his earthly ministry, he recommissions Peter with those words, follow me. Following Jesus seemed like a great place for me to start. And I was pretty sure that this morning's story from the book of Matthew might offer me some direction on how best to proceed in a way that was congruent with Jesus. Only what I encountered as I began to read was a plot to entangle Jesus in his own words. You see, Jesus had been upsetting a few people and causing just a little bit of a stir in Jerusalem. On Monday, he had entered into the city, a king riding on a donkey, with people shouting and waving palm branches in the air. Then he had moved to clear out the temple of those buying and selling goods and overturning the money changers' tables. And then, would you believe it, even the children had become involved. The book of Matthew tells us that the young people were shouting out in the temple. But it was those dire warnings Jesus had directed towards those in the community who assumed they sat comfortably within God's favour that had led to today's plot to entangle. The plot begins with what appears to be a most warm and hospitable welcome. It is with words of praise on their lips that the Pharisees and the Herodians approach. Teacher, they say, you are a man of integrity. 
a teacher of God's ways, one committed to equity. You show partiality to none. But then they proceed to ask Jesus a fairly simple and rather innocent question. They inquire as to how they might live God's ways in a land occupied by Roman rule and subject to Caesar. Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not, they ask. Now this does, on the surface of things, seem to be a rather genuine question. You see, living God's ways amid Roman rule was often fraught with controversy. The Jews of the day disagreed, for example, on how best to handle the situation of burdensome taxes. There was a temple tax, there was a custom tax, a land tax, and an annual tax to Rome. There were those who collaborated and cooperated with Rome, paying their taxes willingly. And then there were those who did not. They resented and protested Roman exploitation out of principle. So the apparently straightforward question regarding taxes was in fact really rather calculated. It was framed in terms of categorising an action as being either right or wrong. And in this case, it was intended as a trap to force Jesus to pledge his allegiance either for or against Rome. A yes response would show Jesus to be in support of Caesar and an impressive and exploitative economic system whilst a negative response would show Jesus to be one who was inciting rebellion and insurrection against Rome. Jesus, it seems, was facing a lose-lose situation. But he refuses to engage directly with such a divisive question. And he moves instead to address the leaders as hypocrites. And indeed, they are. They have said one thing and done the opposite. But Jesus does not stop there. Their attempt to entrap him and ultimately exclude and alienate him in some way is no barrier to what will become a most gracious and hospitable invitation. It's an invitation that calls us to consider how we might respond when others seek to alienate and exclude. Jesus asks them for a coin used to pay the imperial taxes, and they oblige. Producing a coin engraved with both the image of Caesar on it and a claim to divine status. And then Jesus says those words that we heard in our sentence for today. So give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. Now I'm not sure about you, but this really is a confusing, unclear and indefinite response that requires perhaps a little bit of unpacking. I can tell you that the coin belongs to Caesar. It has his image on it. And I could tell you that everyone and everything, including Caesar and the coin, belong to God. Psalm 24 tells us that the earth and all that is in it belongs to God. And I could also tell you that we bear God's image. Scripture also tells us that we are, each and every one of us, 
created in the image of God. Not just me, and not just you, but Caesar too. So it seems that Jesus' words can be interpreted in a myriad of different ways. And this really does beg the question, what is that exactly is it that we are to give and to whom? But I'm not entirely sure that answering this question is the way to go. You see, I wonder... I wonder if the rather ambiguous nature of Jesus' response was exactly what he intended. He refused to provide a firm or a fixed answer that could be interpreted in any way as being restrictive or divisive. And I wonder if this is where its beauty lies. His answer offers both hope and freedom. The strength and power inherent in Jesus' most gracious invitation is for us to live and to discover to whom it is that we do belong and in whose likeness we are made. It offers the beginning tenderness of something both new and pretty powerful. It is an invitation that is, in essence, offering us an opportunity to be transformed as we encounter an all-encompassing God. A God who invites us, all of us, to be a part of a hospitable and gracious welcome and an abundance of grace. And this is the good news this morning. It is good news for you, and it is good news for me. You see, I have finally discovered those words I'd like to begin my sermon with. They are words of beauty, and they are extended to us each and every time we gather for worship here in this place. And they often go a wee bit like this. Grace and peace to you. From God, our creator. The love at our beginning, without end. In our midst and with us. Amen. Thank you, Christina, for unpacking God's word for us this morning. That's really great. Please can we stand and we will affirm our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit, Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified and has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us sit or kneel for a time of prayer. To the bidding, ete atwa aroha, please respond, whakarongo mai ki ta mato inoi. Gracious God, we praise and thank you for your creation, for the natural wonders of our world, for the wonders created by human hands, for the diversity of language and culture. Gracious God, forgive us for our poor handling of your creation, for deforestation and greenhouse gases, for building overcrowded and making polluted cities, for poverty, homelessness, war and famine. Ete atua aroha, whakarongo mai ki tamato inoi. Gracious God, we ask your blessing on our country, Aotearoa, today. Bless our new government that they might govern wisely and fairly. Bless the farmers and growers who feed us. Bless those frontline workers who keep our country moving. Gracious God, change our country. Show and show us how to be part of that change. Feed the hungry, Lord. Shelter the homeless, Lord. Give hope to those who are still affected by the effects of COVID and extreme weather events. Ete aro atua aroha. Whakarongo mai ki tamato inoi. Gracious God, enliven your church for our mission in the world. Inspire us to spread the gospel message. Encourage us to help those in need. Motivate us to stand for justice for the oppressed in our society. Gracious God, bless our St. Aidan's family. Inspire us to do your work in our community. Encourage us to be examples to all believers. Motivate us to be a truly welcoming church. Ete atua aroha, whakarongo mai kita mato inoi. Gracious God, show us our place in your kingdom. Inspire us to live our lives to your glory. Encourage us to step out in faith each day. Motivate us to pray and learn about you. Gracious God, help those known to us who are in need. Comfort those who mourn. Heal those who are sick. Give hope to those in despair. Ete atua aroha, whakarongo mai ki tamato inoi. Before we finish our prayers, it's a prayer from Jerusalem. Pray not for Arab or Jew, for Palestine or Israeli, but pray rather for ourselves, that we might not divide them in our prayers, but keep them in our hearts. For 
those things, good Lord, that your servants have prayed for. Give us grace to work for, and in the purpose of your love, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. And let us conclude by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us be upstanding as we are able. Kia whakapaingia a te karaiti, te āriki o te rongamau. Blessed be Christ, the Prince of Peace, who breaks down the walls that divide. Kia tau te rangi marie o te atua kia koutou. The peace of God be always with you. Praise the Christ who unites us in peace. Let us turn to those around us and wish them words of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Let's be ready to praise God again. And our offertory hymn is We Have a Gospel to Proclaim. To you, Lord, belongs the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. All that is in the heavens and the earth is yours, and of your own we give you. We thank you, Lord, also for these gifts of food and pledges for our building projects. May we boldly use your gifts to continue your work in the world. Amen. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. 
we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is right indeed, ever-living God, to give you thanks and praise through Christ, your only Son. You are the source of all life and goodness. Through your eternal word, you have created all things from the beginning. When we sinned and turned away, you called us back to yourself and gave your Son to share our human nature. He made the one perfect sacrifice for the sin of the world. In him you have made us a holy people by sending upon us your holy and life-giving spirit. Therefore, with the faithful who rest in him, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory and thanksgiving to you, Holy Father. On the night before he died, your son Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Therefore, loving God, recalling your great goodness to us in Christ, his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and this cup of salvation. With thanksgiving and hope, we say, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Your death we show forth. Your resurrection we proclaim. Your coming we await. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which we offer through Christ, our great high priest. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine which we receive may be to us the body and blood of Christ and that we, filled with the Spirit's grace and power, may be renewed for the service of your kingdom. United in Christ with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honour and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Christ's body was broken for us on the cross. Christ is the bread of life. His blood was shed for our forgiveness. Christ is risen from the dead. Come God's people. Come to receive Christ's heavenly food. Please be seated as our service is served. Thank you.
our prayer after communion. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in this hope that you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Give therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And may God stir up in you the gift of the spirit that you may confess Jesus as Lord and proclaim the joy of the everlasting gospel wherever you may be. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Has anyone uh, enjoyed a birthday or has a birthday coming up that we can celebrate? Dave, Dave has a birthday. All right. <clears throat> can we send a, uh, a tray down to Dave? Happy birthday, Dave. And, and <clears throat> Stuart, you've got your hand up. And Stuart's birthday also last Saturday. Oh, Rosemary's birthday on the 25th. We better stop by Rosemary as well. And we've got hands going up in the back. Who, who's that there? Jenny's wedding anniversary. All right. <laughs> Oh, Brian's here. <laughs> Happy wedding anniversary, Brian and Jenny. And who's, who's that hand there? I can't see. It's too far back. Oh. Oh, wonderful. Well, that makes up for the last couple of Sundays. I don't think we had any. <clears throat> we had any birthdays or celebrations. Yes, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. So uh, Lillian will turn 104, isn't it? And that's on Wednesday. And in celebration of that, uh, we have a cake uh, out there in the gathering area, which we will enjoy uh, over a cup of tea uh, once our service finishes. So we can wish uh, Lillian a, a happy birthday uh, over cake this morning. Uh, by way of notices... Um, men meeting for breakfast at 7.30 at Brown's Cafe this coming Thursday. Please come along, men, if you are free. Uh, keep in mind our annual general meeting for St Aidan's will take place on the 19th of November, so about four weeks away for the AGM. Our refurbishment uh, total is uh, a wonderful figure. Now uh, it's reached over 210,000. That's an incredible absolutely astounding uh, result. And uh, if you're still to give a pledge, look, there, there is still time uh, if you would like to. Our writing group uh, will meet on Friday here in the gathering area from 10 a.m. and they'll be putting together messages um, for those who are incarcerated. So messages who will go to uh, prisoners uh, who won't be home for Christmas. So that's what they will be gathering to write. Um, when they come together on Friday. Uh, keep in mind that the Apostle magazine, uh, the theme preparing will be the Christmas uh, theme. And so if you would like to contribute to the magazine, the deadline for that is the 5th of November. There are other uh, notice here, uh, notices here. I'll allow you to be able to uh, read them in your own time. But uh, let us be upstanding then for our closing hymn Jesus, Lord, righteousness revealed, the Son of Man, the Son of God. Thank you.
now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. We go in the name of Christ.